What's that? I think this is a lime. Looks like some piece, a piece of lime. You're right. It's lime. It's wet. Um, squidgy. It's really bitter. This is very sour. Uh-oh. I don't really like it. Oh, dear. I think it will taste different when it's cooked in something. Everyone's not sure about the taste of lime. Can Marina change their minds? Because it's one of the ingredients in Marina's enchiladas. As well as lime, you'll need dried oregano, mild chilli powder, garlic puree, passata, runny honey, cooked chicken breasts, tortilla wraps, smoked paprika, washed and drained tinned black beans, and mature cheddar cheese. First, I'm going to add some tomatoes into my beans. This is passata, a sauce made from tomatoes. I'm going to add some honey. Oh, lovely runny honey. Oh, oh. After that, time to add my spices. That's mild chilli powder, dried oregano, and smoked paprika. Give it a good mix, but be careful not to get any spices in your eyes. That could be a bit painful. Ooh. Now, add the garlic puree and give it another mix. Next, I'm going to get my chicken from the fridge. Marina's dad has already cooked it for her. Add the chicken to the bean mixture and then mix it really well. Here we go to my favourite part, grating the cheese. I love this part because you get to use your muscle. <laughs> Clean out the rest of the cheese with a spoon or fork. Oh, you'll need that in a moment. Add some passata to the bottom of an oiled cooking dish. Most of my dad's family live in Mexico and my favourite Mexican food to eat is quesadillas because they have a melted cheese, a melted cheese is my favourite. Make sure you spread the passata all around the dish. Time to use my tortillas. Just spoon some passata onto each one, like Marina. Followed by the chicken and bean mixture. Put it in a straight line because it will make it easier to fold. Now add your grated cheese and do the same to the others. Ah, they look perfect. What's that? I'm not sure what it is. It looks like the inside of a raisin. It's not a raisin. It looks like soil. <laughs> and it's not soil either. It doesn't really taste of anything. I don't really like it that much. It doesn't have that much flavour. Oh dear. It's a bit like um, vanilla. That's right, it's vanilla seeds. If it was cooked with other stuff in the food, I, I think I would like it more. Well, let's see what they think later, because vanilla is an important ingredient in Annabelle's Kaiserschmarrn. As well as vanilla seeds, you'll need butter, milk, eggs, fresh blueberries, ground cinnamon, fresh raspberries, icing sugar, caster sugar and self-raising flour. So first you take your fruit. I've got blueberries and raspberries and you're going to mash them down. Blueberries and raspberries. Mash it, mash it, mash it. Now add a spoonful of icing sugar and cover it with a clean tea towel until later. Then take an oven-proof baking dish and rub butter all over the inside. Pour some milk into a jug. You'll need this in a moment. So with the eggs, you get your egg and you're going to crack it into the mug. Trap the yolk in an egg cup. Tip the egg white into a bowl and the yolk into the milk. Now, do the same with the rest of your eggs. And make sure you wipe your hands. Whisk it, whisk it, whisk it! <laughs> 
Then sift self-raising flour into a bowl. And you want two black spoons of the sugar. Mix the sugar into the flour. Next, gradually add the milk and egg mixture, a little at a time, to make a batter. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's vanilla. Vanilla comes from a pod that grows on a type of plant called an orchid. Inside each pod are lots of tiny little seeds, and these are the things we eat. Since ancient Aztec times, vanilla has been used to make food and drinks taste really nice. What's that? I think it's lettuce. It's not lettuce. Oh, they're all having a good munch, but is it tasty? It doesn't really taste like anything. It's nice and crunchy. Feels a bit dry and crunchy. I don't like it. I like it. Great stuff, Izzy. It's a voy cabbage. I think it will taste different if it's cooked. I don't really like the taste. Oh, dear. Not everyone likes it. Can Naomi change their minds? Because Savoy cabbage is an important ingredient in her Marfi fish. You'll also need tomato puree, smooth peanut butter, a yellow pepper, mackerel fillets, dry chilli flakes, dried mixed herbs, sweet potato, garlic, long shallots and warm water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four spoons of peanut butter inside this pot of water. Mmm, and give it a stir. And make sure no one eating this is allergic to peanuts. Then squeeze tomato puree onto a spoon and add it to the casserole dish. The next thing we're going to do now is the yellow pepper. You've got to press down your thumbs really, really hard and then rip. OK. So these seeds, we don't want to put them in the marfa. Then you've got to break them into little parts like this. That's it. Just tear the pepper up and put the pieces in the pot. Dry chilli flakes next, but make sure you don't get any in your eyes. <laughs> Time for the dried mixed herbs. And Naomi's adding chopped peeled sweet potato that her mum did for her earlier. <laughs> mix it, mix it, mix it. And now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Yes, that's right. It's Savoy cabbage. Savoy cabbage is a green vegetable with crinkly leaves that grows from a cabbage plant. As the cabbage plant grows, lots and lots of leaves grow tightly in the middle and this is called the cabbage head. When the cabbage head is big enough, it's picked, washed and ready to eat. Cooked or raw, it's used as an ingredient in many different recipes. Cabbage has been grown for hundreds of years. In ancient China, some people thought that eating cabbage would help men with no hair grow it back again. Ha <laughs> ha! What's that? Carrot? It's not carrot. Melon. It's not melon either. It tastes like a swede. <laughs> That's right, it's cooked swede. Mmm, Theo's not sure. It's not very nice. I don't like the taste of it. Oh dear. I like the taste. I eat it often, but not too often. That's good, but can Gabriel change everyone else's minds? because Swede's an important ingredient in his Cornish pasties. As well as Swede, you'll also need potatoes, shredded cooked beef, water, plain flour, spring onions, milk, butter, lard and black pepper. First off, you mix the butter, the lard and the flour together. Just tip them into the flour and rub with your fingers until the mixture looks like little crumbs. Then shake the bowl to bring those lumps to the top and give it a last rub. Now I'm going to add some water to the mixture. And give it a good mix too. 
Yeah, well done. I love mixing. I quite like making mess. No, I can see that. But you're doing well, Gabriel. It's easier to use your hands. And now I'm trying to get the pastry together. That's it. Squeeze it into a ball shape. Next, put the pastry into the bowl. Cover it and leave it to one side. Now Gabriel needs some shredded cooked beef that his mum made earlier today. He's then going to add spring onions, which he's topped and tailed. I love eating Cornish pasties. Remember to be careful with those scissors, Gabriel. I'm putting the onions into the beef. And now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's swede. Swede is a root vegetable, which means that the part we eat grows underground. Swedes have yellow insides, which taste sweet when cooked. Swede can be cooked in lots of different ways. Boiled, steamed, roasted, or even added to pasties for extra flavour. It's said that many years ago, Swedes were sometimes used by soldiers to fire out of cannons instead of cannonballs. How funny is that? What's that? I think it's a kiwi. I think it's a um, kiwi because um, when you cut it, it has a, a bit of seeds on it. You're right. It's kiwi fruit. It feels very slippery. Hmm, OK. And what else do you think? I like the taste of it because it's juicy. Ah, that's great. It tastes sour. It tastes OK, but I think I might prefer apples. Well, let's see if indigo can make everyone love the taste of kiwi fruit. You'll also need fresh strawberries, fresh mint leaves, whipping cream, lemon, corn flour, vanilla paste, eggs and caster sugar. First, you take the baking paper and then you draw four circles. Just draw around a small bowl, turn it over and pop it onto an oiled baking sheet. Crack an egg into a mug, check it for shell, and trap the yolk in an egg cup. Pour the white bit into the bowl. And then you pour the yolk into this one right here. Well done, and do the same with another egg. Goodbye, mister. Oh, oh. wipe your hands. Now whisk the egg whites until they go white and frothy. I've got to whisk it, whisk it, whisk it! <laughs> That's right! <laughs> Add caster sugar a little at a time as you whisk. Like that. That's it. Keep on mixing. Whee! And you can add a little bit more. We're nearly done here with the whisking. And it looks good. Perfect. Add corn flour and a squeeze of lemon. Now, whisk it, whisk it, till we get those stiff white peaks. This mixture is called meringue. This is ready to go. Put a piping bag into a jug, just like this, and spoon in the mixture. Hold the top of the bag together, and then squeeze the mixture out of it to make meringue nests using the circles to guide you. Well done. That looks great. Dip the back of the spoon into each one to make space for the filling. And you need to do the last nest. Mum! Good job, Indigo. Ask a grown-up to put the tray into the oven for you to cook. What's that? It looks like a slug. Oh, it's not a slug. It feels squishy and a little bit um, wet. I think it might be a pepper or something. Ooh, it's not a pepper either. It's quite vinegary. I think it's pickle. That's right, it's dill pickle. I really like the taste. Oh, good. I can't really describe it, but 
It just doesn't taste nice. Uh-oh. Not everyone likes it. Can Kai change their minds? Because dill pickle is an important ingredient in his recipe. As well as dill pickle, you'll need cream, spring onions, carrots, stock powder, bread rolls, new potatoes and warm water. So first we're going to cut the top and the tail for the spring onions. Then just carefully cut them up into little pieces. And now I'm going to pick them up and put them in the bowl. Then take cold new potatoes, which Mum cooked earlier, carefully cut them into smaller pieces and add them to the spring onions. Spoon stock powder into warm water and mix it, mix it, mix it. Add it to the dish and mix it again. What's next? I'm going to snap these carrots into little pieces so it's easier to grate it. Pop the chunks into a grater and here's Kai's sister, Maya, to help. You can do it. Yes, he can. I'm glad I've got Maya here to help me with the grating. Oh, well done, you two. OK, now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's dill pickle. Dill pickles are small cucumbers that have been soaked in a mixture. The mixture mostly contains vinegar, a herb called dill, mustard seeds and water. This makes them very tasty. Cucumbers are grown from seed, and cucumber plants are called vines. These grow yellow flowers. Many of these flowers grow into the cucumbers that we eat. There are lots of different types of cucumbers. Some have smooth skins, and some have bumpy skins. Eating cucumber is very good for you. It's thought that it can even help you keep awake when you're feeling tired. What's that? It smells like fish. Feels like paper. It looks like a snake skin. Oh, it's definitely not snake skin. Come on, have a guess. It tastes salty. I think it's seaweed. Ah, that's right, it's nori seaweed. I don't really like it. I don't like it. Oh dear, but let's see if Hannah can change their minds because seaweed is one of the main ingredients in her sushi. You'll also need a carrot, mayonnaise, a red pepper, eggs, salt, hot water, cucumber, rice vinegar, sushi rice, tinned tuna and caster sugar. First I need to measure the rice, then wash it. Just scoop sushi rice into a sieve or rice rinser, like Hannah's. Then rinse it twice in cold water. Next, I'm going to pour the rice into the bowl. And add some cold water. Mum, can you put this in the rice cooker? Hannah's mum is using a special rice cooker to cook the sushi rice. But you could cook it at home in a normal oven. Now, crack an egg, check for shell, tip into a bowl, then do the same with another egg. And don't forget to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. Give your eggs a mix and pour into an oiled loaf tin. Mum, can you go and put this in the oven? Oh, we'll go, Hannah. Thank you. Now for the rest of the sushi fillings. Now I'm going to get one spoonful of mayonnaise and stir it in the tuna. The main difference about Japanese food and English food is that Japanese food has more rice and fish and I think it's tasty. To make your rice dressing, spoon rice vinegar, caster sugar and a pinch of salt into a jug and then give it all a good mix. Then when the rice is cooked and slightly cooled, pour the vinegar dressing all over it and stir it with a spoon or a rice pan. Now cover the rice with a damp tea towel for a while. 
When the eggs are cooked and cooled, carefully cut them into thin strips to make one of your sushi fillings. Hannah's going to use sliced cucumber, pepper strips and grated carrot as well. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's nori seaweed. Lexi's washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. I'm making Glamorgan sausages for my friends. And she's invited Safi, Roman and Lily to taste one of the main ingredients before they come round for a very special Welsh meal later. What's that? I don't know what it is. Thinking this is like kind of vegetable. I think it's a leek. Well done, it's cooked leek. Don't like it. Uh oh. And um, it's really like squishy and stuff. It's not my type of food I would eat. Do you think Lexi can change their minds? Because leek is one of the main ingredients in her Glamorgan sausages. You'll also need plain flour, carefully cheese, English mustard powder, white and brown bread slices, fresh parsley, eggs, black pepper and olive oil. First I'm going to take a uh, grater and grate some bread. I'm, I'm tearing up bread to put in the grater. This is brown bread. Now I'm grating the bread to make bread crumbs for the Gamorgan sausage. Do the same with white bread to make white crumbs. And I am finished. Now I'm going to pour this into the bowl. And put half into another dish for later. Now crumble the carefully cheese onto a plate. It's just making me hungry. <laughs> oh, me too. Add it to your bowl. Take some parsley, pull off the leaves, put them into a mug, carefully chop and put them into the bowl. And I'm going to take an egg and crack it. Check for shell and give it a mix. Tip into the bowl and do the same with another egg. Don't forget to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. Add the mustard powder, black pepper and give it another mix. Mix it, mix it, mix it! Time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Leek. A leek is a vegetable that's related to an onion. Leeks can be cooked and used as an ingredient in dishes such as soups and casseroles. In ancient times, the Roman Emperor Nero ate so many leeks, many people called him porophagus, which means leek eater. Leeks are grown all over the world, but they're most famous in Wales, where it's the national vegetable. What's that? It's brown on the outside, but it's white on the inside. Hmm, what does it taste like? Oh, not sure. Ooh. Might be coconut, because it's a little bit sweet. I think it's a coconut. You're right, it's fresh coconut. I don't really like that taste. It's a bit too crunchy and the back tastes bitter. Uh-oh. I don't like it. Oh, dear. Well, I like it. That's great news, but not everyone seems to like it. Can Balthazar change their minds because fresh coconut is one of the ingredients in his Ravani cake? You'll also need eggs, vanilla paste, desiccated coconut, shelled pistachio nuts, semolina, natural yoghurt, caster sugar, baking powder, olive oil, runny honey, rose water and plain flour. Balthazar's oiling his loaf tins with olive oil first. Kind of feels like you're painting. Ha <laughs> ha, oil painting. If you haven't got loaf tins, you could use four large muffin cases. Next, we have to pour all the yoghurt into the bowl. Then crack an egg into a mug, check for shell and add it to the bowl. And you do another egg. And don't forget to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. Give it a mix and add olive oil. I'm going to use this rose water 
Ooh, rose water. Add to the bowl along with some vanilla paste. And you just give it a stir. What are you up to now, Baltazar? I'm going to use this um, yoghurt pot, which is for measuring the semolina. Great idea. Use the clean yoghurt pot to add semolina into a different bowl. Then add caster sugar, baking powder and plain flour. After all of that, you just give it a stir. It's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Coconut. A coconut palm is a tree with large green leaves that grows in very hot countries. The seed of the coconut palm is called a coconut. When the hard coconut shell is cut open, the soft white part can be found inside. This is the bit that you eat. The hairy part of the leftover coconut shell can be used for making lots of different things, including ropes, brushes, mats, and even stuffing for mattresses. What's that? Looks like an apple. It looks like cucumber. Looks like a cucumber. Oh, it's not apple or cucumber. It's courgette. I don't really know what it is. It tastes a bit boring. I think I might like the seafood. Everyone's not sure about the taste of courgette. Can Scarlet change their minds because courgettes are one of the main ingredients in Scarlet's ratatouille? You'll also need fresh thyme, roasted peppers, long shallots, camembert cheese, baby aubergines, chopped tinned tomatoes, black pepper, garlic and vegetable oil. First we're going to grease the dish. Brush the inside with the vegetable oil and tip in the chopped tomatoes. They're all slurping and red. Take roasted peppers from a jar and dab them dry on kitchen paper. So I'm going to dab them with a tissue. Then I'm going to chop them up into strips. Carefully does it, Scarlet. Then just pop them into the dish. Get the aubergines and cut the top and the bottom of the aubergines. Mmm. Now carefully cut them into smaller chunks. Add them to the tomatoes and roasted peppers and give it all a good mix. Cut the ends from your long shallots. Peel the shallots. My friends have not had ratatouille, so I hope they like it. Oh, let's hope so, Scarlet. Now, pop your shallots into a plastic food bag and then peel some garlic. If you find this tricky, you can ask a grown-up to help you. Let's put our garlic in the bag. Now, give it a good bash. And don't forget, you can always wash the bag and use it again afterwards. It's really hard to bash the sh shallots. Nice and bashed, we can pour it into the pot. And we're going to stir it. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right, it's courgette. Courgettes are vegetables that grow from a plant. Courgettes can be cooked in many different ways, such as boiled, grilled or cut into strips and used just like pasta. Courgettes are grown all over the world and in some countries are known as zucchini. What's that? I think it's a herb. I think it's a leaf. It smells a bit funny. It feels all slippery. It smells like mint. Ah, it's a fresh mint leaf. I don't like it. I don't really like it. Uh-oh. I like the smell of it, but I don't really like the taste of it because it tastes like toothpaste. Oh, no. Let's see if Ryan can change their minds because fresh mint is one of the ingredients in his pork and prawn char. You'll also need an egg, soy sauce, fish sauce, garlic puree, cooked pork mince, cooked shelled prawns, 
spring onions, black pepper, plain flour and olive oil. I'm going to do one spoon of soy sauce into this bowl. Then add fish sauce and garlic puree. Carefully top and tell spring onions and chop them into small pieces. Add them to the bowl. Now we can get the pork. Ryan's mum cooked this earlier. Add it to a plastic food bag. I think my friends will really, really like this so much. Bash it with a rolling pin. It looks like it's done now. Yeah, all done. Now I'm going to put it into this bowl. Then get cooked prawns from the fridge. I'm going to do the same thing with the prawns what we just did with the pork. That's right. Just spoon them into your bag and give them a bash. Now remember, you have to be very careful when cooking with prawns, so make sure you don't use this bag again. Add them to the bowl. It's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Fresh mint. Fresh mint is a herb that grows on a plant that has a strong minty taste and smell. The leaves of the mint plant can be dark green, grey green, or even purple in colour. And this is the part of the plant that we eat. Mint has been grown for a very long time. Many years ago, people who lived in ancient Greece would rub it into their tables and around their homes to make it smell nice. What's that? I think this is a banana. I think it's a banana. Banana. You're all right. It's unripened green banana. It doesn't taste like normal banana. It's not very sweet. It's unripe. You should only taste a small amount for this special taste test. I don't like it as much as ordinary bananas. Uh-oh. Everyone's not too sure about the taste of unripened banana. Let's see if Talib can change their minds, because it's one of the main ingredients in his banana curry. You'll also need garlic cloves, black pepper, cumin seeds, a green pepper, fresh coriander, long shallots, water, baby tomatoes, black mustard seeds, medium curry powder, ground turmeric, coconut cream, ginger paste and lemon. First I'm going to take the shallots and cut the hairy bits off. The shallot looks like a squashed onion. Carefully does it, Talib. Then peel off the skin. My mum told me I to cook this meal and I really love it. What's next? Peel the garlic. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help you. Now pop them into a plastic food bag. And bash them with a rolling pin into small pieces. This is for bashing the bag. Remember, you can wash the bag out afterwards to use it again. Then tip everything into the casserole dish and grind in some black pepper. Now I'm going to get the green peppers and pull the stalk off. Just push and pull apart the pepper and take out the seeds. When they open in the peppers, it sounds a little crunchy. Tear it up into small pieces. Ooh, that's it. I'm going to put all the green peppers into the bowl. I'm going to get the tomatoes and cut them with the scissors. Careful there, Talib. I really love tomatoes. And add them to the dish with black mustard seeds. I'm going to have one pinch of cumin seed. And some medium curry powder. 
ground turmeric and ginger paste. Polina's washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. Today I'm making catfish and sticky rice for my friends. And she's invited Gabriel, Amelia and Nicola to taste an important ingredient before they come round for her special Thai meal later. What's that? Uh, an onion? It's not onion. I think it's a kind of vegetable. It's not a vegetable. It's lemongrass. What does it taste like? It tastes like uh, a bit crunchy. I think it's very yucky. Oh, no. It's very really disgusting. <laughs> oh dear, no one seems that keen on the taste of lemongrass. Do you think they'll change their minds? Because it's one of the ingredients in Polina's catfish with sticky rice. You'll also need fresh lime, catfish fillets, sweet soy sauce, long shallots, fresh coriander, Thai sticky rice, soft brown sugar, water, black pepper and olive oil. First, you get the one whole full of rice. That's uncooked Thai sticky rice. Add cold water and leave it to soak. Now pull the leaves off fresh coriander, put them in a mug and carefully chop them up. You'll need those for your rice later. Add soft brown sugar to sweet soy sauce. Give it a little stir. And some water to make your dressing. Then mix it, mix it, mix it. Now carefully cut the ends off long shallots. We peel these off. That's right, peel off the skin and put them into a plastic food bag. Now it's time for my very, very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Lemongrass. Lemongrass is a plant that has long, thin green leaves. The leaves look a bit like grass, but taste like lemon, which is where the plant gets its name. The outer leaves of the lemongrass are peeled off to reveal the softer inside that we can eat. Lemongrass is often used as a herb in curries and soups, but can also be used to flavour tea. Lemongrass is especially popular in Asian countries like Thailand, Malaysia and Vietnam, but is now used in cooking all over the world. What's that? I know it's um, a vegetable. It's green and it's got seeds in it. I think pepper? It's not pepper. What does it taste like? It's really hard. It tastes sour. Uh-oh. I might like it in the food, but Good. I, it's not very nice by itself. Ugh, that tastes disgusting. Oh, dear. No one seems to enjoy the taste of raw okra. Can a Kai change their minds when they taste it in his recipe? You'll also need hot paprika, stock powder, tinned chopped tomatoes, baby spinach leaves, cooked roast chicken breasts, tomato puree, warm water, long shallots, ginger paste, black pepper and garlic cloves. The first thing I am going to do is pour the top tomatoes into the dish. Next I am going to pour the tomato puree onto the spoon and into the dish. Nicely done, Akai. I'm going to do three spoons of Ginger. That's it. Just add the ginger paste to the casserole dish. I'm mixing it now. What's next? Peel off the garlic. Just peel the papery skin off the garlic cloves. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help. Now I've finished the garlic, now I'm going to do the shallot. Carefully cut the ends off the shallots. I'm going to peel it. Yeah, <laughs> great peeling, look I. Then pop the shallots and garlic into a plastic food bag 
and bash them into small pieces with a rolling pin. Put your fingers! <laughs> Don't forget you can always wash your bag out to use it again later. Then tip them into the dish and here we go. Mix it, mix it, mix it. I am going to pull the spinach onto the sauce. Make a layer of spinach leaves on top of everything else. That's right, just like that. It's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Okra. Okra is a green leafy plant with pointy pods. These pods and the seeds inside are the things that we eat. Okra plants like to grow in hot countries around the world, including India, Egypt, Nigeria and Ghana. What's that? It looks like cardboard. It looks like... celery. Oh, it's not celery. Hmm. It tastes like garlic or something like, you know, like onion or something. It's not garlic either. Mm. Horseradish? That's right, it's horseradish. No, I don't like that. No. Oh dear. Let's see if Mason can change their minds because horseradish is one of the ingredients in his Yorkshire pudding with sausages. You'll also need cooked cocktail sausages, plain flour, eggs, broccoli, water, milk, black pepper and vegetable oil. Take the broccoli. I'm going to snap the broccoli into small pieces. Then just tip into the dish and make sure you pour the water all over it. When that's done, you need to cover the bowl with foil. Very neatly done. I'm going to weigh the flour onto the scales. The flour looks like snow, but really powdery. Next, we're going to grind some black pepper. Then, crack an egg into a mug, give it a whisk and tip it into a jug. Then do the same with another egg. And remember to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. We're going to do the milk now. I've got to add some spoons of milk. And now it's time for a whisk. That's it, Mason. Whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. You've got to add the milk and egg mixture to the flour bit by bit because we don't want it to have lumps. This will be the batter for the Yorkshire pudding. My daddy came from Yorkshire and every time I go to my nanny and Pop Pops, I have Yorkshire puddings with something special. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right, it's horseradish. Horseradish comes from the root of the horseradish plant. When the flowers on the plant die, the root is dug up and used in cooking. Horseradish has a very strong taste and can be chopped, grated or made into a sauce that's often eaten with a roast dinner. Many years ago, some people rubbed horseradish into their heads to make their headaches go away. 